Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Code of Errors Lunch and Learn on Disaster Planning. Our presentation today will be done by Joe. Joe, are you ready to go? Yep. All righty. Get this moved over. First, we're going to talk about backups versus disaster recovery planning. Um, so the backups are just copies of your IT system, and they're going to be used in recoveries to bring your critical systems back online to a prior date. The disaster recovery plan is an advanced form of backups that actually utilize additional planning and processing to protect your data. Um, you're going to use utilize disaster recovery to plan for disasters that may occur, things like environmental, you know, earthquakes, tornadoes, um, fires, what have you, or services you rely on going out, such as your ISP or electricity. These factors are going to make it important to be able to recover in a different geographical location. Um, you can keep backups locally. A lot of us keep our SQL backups on our servers directly, but you may want to be able to move those backups into the cloud or to an off-site location in order to um, hedge your bets against some of these environmental disasters or your power going out. You also want to consider being able to recover in an off-site or in the cloud in order to do the same thing. Your backups being out there won't do everything for you. You're still going to need to be able to bring things back up. So we're talking about what makes up a disaster recovery plan. Each company is going to have its own unique requirements for storage of data and business critical applications. So first off, you're going to need to assess all of your business critical applications and determine what is your priority to get up. Is there an order? Do things rely on each other? Developing a good plan will take all of these requirements into consideration, along with the risk associated with downtime. This will assess and minimizing complexity of the recovery process in the event of a disaster. As always, with each process, the cost versus risk fa factor will heavily weigh into decisions on how to back up your data. For Epicor data, we generally recommend geo-redundant storage to replicate data to another physical location in a secondary location to protect against regional outages. There is a larger cost associated with this type of storage. However, compared to local redundant storage, there's less to be concerned about with the safety of your data. Here's a few ways to store your data. So your typical plans will be a local storage in the cloud or a hybrid utilizing both. With your local storage, your critical data is stored on company-owned hardware, generally on-premise. It can also be off-site in another physical location. Although this is considered the most secure option, it runs into similar risks as your local redundant storage with regards to safety concerns and additional systems and staff are required to manage these. Your cloud disaster recovery, it's going to be your most scalable option. This option, you're going to leverage a cloud data center to store your critical systems, data, and applications. And it's going to allow you to recover and keep your entire virtual environments at the ready, reducing your rec recovery time and outage time. With the hybrid option, this is going to give you the additional benefits of both being able to recover into the cloud, or if you don't have a major regional outage, you're going to be able to recover on site efficiently. Your data is vital to business efficiency. Your emails, customer data, HR, and financial documents are not replaceable. Each of these documents requires hours of work, and recovery is going to be necessary. So it's important to review how much of a disaster can cost your business. You got to review the cost of system downtime, poor employee productivity, and missed sales opportunities. So here's your types of disaster recovery. Um, you've got virtualized disaster recovery plan. That's going to utilize off-site virtual machines to recover from a disaster. That kind of ties into the cloud storage, but you're going to have to continuously replicate your data to these off-site virtual machines. There is a high cost associated with such a thing. Your network disaster recovery plan is going to use to recover from interruptions in network services. So that'll be like a redundant ISP or internet service provider. Your cloud disaster recovery plan will utilize cloud storage from local backups for ease of recovery to systems. And that plan can either restore to physical or virtualized machines. The standard recovery process is going to be to establish a planning group. You need a team to identify your core applications and processes, also to identify your dependencies and priorities throughout the system. You're going to want to perform a risk assessment and define an acceptable recovery time identifying the level of acceptable risks for backups and applications so you know how much data loss is acceptable compared to the cost for backups. 
You also need to factor in recovery time in the event of a disaster. Prepare an inventory of assets throughout your sites in order to identify what needs to be replaced. If there is a regional outage, if there's any problems that occur to the equipment, you'll need to be able to replace them so that people can get back online. You want to identify your dependencies and priorities. Again, that'll be established by your planning team. And the focus here is that some systems are going to depend on others. Payroll may need to be done on Friday, or it may be critical to get the boss's laptop running so he's not yelling at everybody. Not every priority is going to make business sense, but the order things need to be done has to be documented regardless. Specifically for Epicor, you're going to need SQL running before you have your Epicor system back online. There's no purpose in having the Epicor server running if SQL is not online, as you're not going to be able to actually access anything. You're going to want to develop a recovery strategy, and that will need to be, again, utilizing your dependencies, utilizing your priorities. You're going to develop a communication plan. If all of your systems are down, you're going to need to, be able to communicate and get that information across to the other teams. Develop documentation, verification criteria, procedures, and responsibilities. That's all going to work with your planning team to then build out a team to actually follow the recovery process. And you're going to want to test the plan constantly in order to ensure that your entire team is comfortable with their responsibilities. Then you can implement the plan and maintain the IT infrastructure. When you're maintaining the IT infrastructure, you need to make sure you're reviewing the plan on a regular basis. You're going to have to make sure that if anything's added, such as a new payroll system or a new physical location, that, those, that information gets updated in your plan. Same thing goes for if something gets removed and you no longer have a system. That needs to be removed from your documentation. You need to focus on recovery, not discovery. Want more Coda Bears Lunch and Learn? Check out our channel for more videos or contact us on our website for registration information.